everyone and welcome to part two of Vito Doria's football vlog reviewing the 2013-2014 Serie A season. I am Vito Doria, a writer for Forza Italian Football and in this vlog I will be talking about eight of the Serie A teams and these teams had either missed out on the Europa League spots or they had comfortably finished mid-table. First, I will be talking about Torino, Juventus's rivals. They missed out on Europa League qualification on the final match day after they drew 2-2 with Fiorentina in front. Alessio Cerchi missed the vital penalty at the end of the game and that allowed Parma to get the final Europa League spot. Cerchi had an impressive campaign though, scoring 13 goals and he struck a great partnership with Ciro Immobile, who finished as Serie A's leading goal scorer with 22 goals. The team had just survived the relegation last season, but coach Giampiero Ventura had put his old 4-2-4 tactics aside and also put aside his former players at Bari to build the team around Cerchi and Immobile, and it reaped its benefits. For next season, Holding on to Cerchi and Immobile will be a problem, but if they can't find uh, replacements on the market, they can look to the youth system as they top the group in the Primavera Championship. In 8th place this season was AC Milan. They had a disappointing season by their standards and they had to deal with both on-field and off-the-field issues. Coach Massimiliano Allegri was sacked when AC Milan lost 4-3 to Sassuolo and he was replaced by former AC Milan player Clarence Seydorf. Although Seydorf managed to get the Rossoneri back up the table, uh, overall the campaign was a disappointment because the team did not play convincing football and you look at the roster and most of the team either has average players or has been. There were off-field issues mostly concerning Adriano Galliani and Barbara Berlusconi, the daughter of Silvio, the president. Those off-field issues should be sorted out because it has impacted on the team. Back to the on-field issues, uh, Adel Tarapt and Kaka proved to be good signings. Kaka was not the player of old, but he still showed some moments of brilliance and Tarapt arrived in January and although he struggled in the EPL because they focus on pace and physicality his more technical skills were allowed to flourish in the Serie A. Mario Balotelli was a disappointment this season he scored 14 goals in the Serie A but he was expected to carry the team into higher positions in the league and also do well in Europe. He could be sold in the summer and he could go to either Monaco in the French League or even back to the Premier League. For next season Sadoff will be gone and it is likely that Filippo Inzaghi will take over as coach. He's been coaching the youth side for the last two years and he might be able to give younger players such as Ricardo Saponara, Brian Cristante and Andrea Petania more time in the senior team. They could even consider bringing back Alberto Poloski, who has been with Kiev for the last few seasons. In ninth place this season was Lazio. They were impressive last season under Vladimir Petkovic, who managed to take them to the Coppa Italia final, where they bet their local rivals Roma 1 0. This season was a disappointment and there were off-field concerns regarding him because of his contract and that he was approached by the Swiss FA. He will take over as Switzerland coach after the World Cup. When he was sacked in January, his replacement was Eddie Rea, who had coached Lazio before. He could not get them into the Europa League positions, but there were some good performances under him and that included uh, moving captain Stefano Maori into the false nine position. He's usually either a central midfielder or left midfielder, but 
he actually was pretty impressive in that role. The biggest performer for the Aquile this season though was Antonio Candreva. He's a regular with the Italian national team and he scored 12 goals in the Serie A this season which is a record for a Lazio midfielder in the history. Uh, for next season they will need stability on the field and off the field because some fans were not going to Lazio's games particularly the ultras who are against the Lotito's presidency. Claudio Lotito might not be too keen to spend on stars and he might actually consider looking at the youth sector because they have won the Coppa Italia for the Primavera teams and that team was coached by Simone Inzaghi, the brother of Filippo. In 10th place this season was Hellas Verona. The Giallo Blue were promoted from Serie B last season and although coach Andrea Mandolini had disappointing spells in the Serie A with Atalanta and Siena in the past, he managed to gel this current Verona side together. Brazilian youngster Jorginho was to stay in the first half of the season, but then he was transferred to Napoli. The main standouts for Verona though this season were the young Paraguayan Argentinian winger Juan Iturbe who was on loan from Portuguese Giants Porto and the veteran striker Luca Toni. Juan Iturbe is only about 20 years old but he has been one of the real standouts of the Serie A season. Verona bought out the buyout clause of his contract for 15 million euros so if he doesn't stay on for next season Verona can bump up the price for any potential buyers. Luca Toni will be turning 37 this year but he scored 20 goals in the Serie A season and Mandolini's side really made the use of his height in attack. For next season Surviving in Serie A would be the main goal again, but if they recruit well, they could aim for the Europa League. Credit must be given to Sean Soliano, who is the sporting director, who helped assemble the side, and most of those players were able to fit into Mondolini's 4-3-3 system. In 11th place this season was Atalanta. Ledea had another solid campaign under coach Stefano Colantuono and they too were in contention for Europa League spots. They had some pretty impressive performers this season such as goalkeeper Andrea Consigli, playmaker Luca Cigarini, veteran forward German Dennis or Hermann Dennis, however you prefer to say it, as well as left winger Giacomo Bonaventura. There was also the emergence of the young midfielder Daniele Baselli, who was also rumoured to go to Fiorentina. One of the things Atalanta must do to keep the stability is hold on to Bonaventura, but it is very likely that he will move on after the European summer. He has been linked with Juventus in the past and with uh, Biancareri's uh, decision to possibly use a fourth. 3-3 formation next season, he would be a good fit on the left wing. Okay then, the team that finished in 12th place this season was my team, Sampdoria. Check out the sky. Oh yeah. Forza Doria. Anyway, the Doriani didn't have a great start to the season under coach Delio Rossi. He was missing key players such as Andrea Polli and Mauro Icardi, who were sold to the Milan Giants. After losing 2-1 to Fiorentina, Sampdoria decided to sack Delio Rossi as coach and replace him with former Serbian international coach Sinisa Mihalovic. He changed the formation from the 3-5-2 to the 4-2-3-1 and also changed the positions of some of the players, mostly, in particular, Skodrin Mustafi. The Albanian German defender was a right back but he was converted into a centre back and his form has been so good that Joachim Lowe has put him in the provisional squad for Germany's World Cup team. 
Brazilian striker Eda finished the season with 12 goals. But his form was patchy this season, and he also had this ridiculous habit of constantly hitting free kicks straight into the defensive wall. It was because of this that I wanted uh, the Italian winger Gianluca Sansone to play on the left wing instead of him. Uh, to show you how good this guy Sansone is, he played well in uh, Torino versus Sampdoria which ended in a 2-2 draw but Sampdoria were winning that game. He was also the star of uh, the best win under Sinisa Mahalovic, the 5-0 win against Verona where he opened the score. From next season, uh, the president Eduardo Garone must recruit shrewdly. Sampdoria had been linked with a few players such as Panayotis Kone, Lazarus Christodolopoulos, Gonzalo Bergesio and Duvan Zapata but more than anything Sampdoria need to improve in the wide positions. In 13th place this season was Udinese. As an emerging journalist I should be more objective and not subjective but in this case I was actually rather happy that Udinese were disappointing this season. Not only that, I'm sure lots of Serie A fans were glad that Udinese finished in the lower half of the table. The main reason is that as good as they have been in Serie A in recent years, they have been a great disappointment in Europe. So in some ways you could say Udinese were put back in their place. In their defence, they did have a bit of trouble when striker Antonio Di Natale was not playing. He has been the talisman of that club and he could be retiring at the end of the season. If he does retire, the team will be expected to struggle. But if there's one thing Udinese can count on, they have an excellent scouting system and they can find unknown talent anywhere. The one positive of the campaign is the emergence of young goalkeeper Simone Scuffet, or Simone Scuffet. He is only 17 years old, but he counted out experienced goalkeeper Zelko Berkic. Coach Francesco Guidolin is now in a director's role and either Andres Tramaccioni or Luigi Del Neri will be expected to replace him as coach. Okay, the final team I will be talking about in part two of the Caltro vlog will be Genoa, some daughter's rivals. Early in the season they had youth team coach Fabio Liberani promoted to the senior squad but things did not work out for him and he got sacked. His replacement was former coach Giampiero Gasparini. He had struggled in stints at Inter and Palermo, but on his return to Genoa he showed that Genoa is his place and his second home. Alberto Giladino had a Fantastic campaign for the Griffoni scoring 15 goals, but the real star of the campaign would have to be young goalkeeper Mattia Perin. He prevented thrashings for Pescara last season, and this season with the Griffoni, he has showed that he's a reliable pair of hands between the sticks, and he will go to the World Cup in Brazil next month as the third choice goalkeeper for Italy. For next season, uh, the team just needs more stability than anything else but it would be good for Gasparini if he could play a player like uh, Ioannis Petfazidis more regularly. The Greek midfielder is known as the Greek Messi, believe it or not, but um, he is actually quite a skillful player and he's one of those guys with a bit of an X factor. Okay, that's the end of part two of Vito Doria's football vlog reviewing the 2013-2014 season. Stay around for part three where I talk about the teams that survived the relegation battle and the ones who unfortunately got relegated themselves. Thanks for listening.